good morning from Lviv again. We're at Lviv train station, absolutely gorgeous building. And uh, the Soviets, I assume it's a Soviet building, but uh, the Soviets did do very good railway stations. So Odessa is equally beautiful as well. Um, today we are off to Truskovitz. It's uh, eight o'clock in the morning at the moment, and we are heading down to Truskovitz on the 853 train. It's about a two, two and a half hour ride down there, uh, not very far. And uh, it's a beautiful resort city. Um, the city's probably a bit of a, an exaggeration. It's actually a town um, famous for its mineral waters and spas and uh, wellness centers and stuff like that. We're only having two nights there, but um, literally it'll just be a chilling out sort of sort of place where we can just go and eat and relax and walk a bit and uh, maybe do some photography. We'll see how it looks. And, uh, on Saturday, we will come back here and Sunday Tanya will leave and then I will have a further four four full days here um, to do video stock, mainly video stock, although I will do some photography as well. And then after that, I've got a intercity train from here over to Kiev where I'll have five days in Kiev doing some shooting as well. And I uh, hope you can come along on the journey for that as well. And uh, we'll see you a little bit later, perhaps on the train. So we're now on our ride down to Truskovitz. It's a somewhat more Soviet style of train this time. We're in the second class uh, with four bunks. Don't think we'll have anyone else in with us. Most people seem to have got off in Lviv. This is a train from Dnipro down to Truskovitz. But it uh, looks quite comfortable. If it's just us on our own, we can just enjoy the trip. Hopefully there'll be a nice bit of scenery on the way. If there is, I'll try and film some of it. And uh, we'll see you in Truskovitz. Just out in the distance there you can see the foothills or at least I can see the foothills of the uh, Carpathian Mountains and uh, we went there uh, a few years ago it's a beautiful part of the world and uh, one of the few places in Europe that still has wild bears and uh, lynx I believe and definitely wolves as well although you're very unlikely to see them We've just arrived in Truskovitz and uh, this is the train that we arrived on and it was pretty full. I mean we had a cabin to ourselves but the number of people that got off was uh, quite substantial and uh, the demographic would uh, certainly make us some of the younger members of it because uh, it's a place where people come for health and uh, there's a lot of elderly people come here to drink the uh, the famed waters and uh, anyway we got a few hours to kill two or three hours to kill before we need to check into our hotel so I suspect we'll go and try and find some coffee somewhere
so here we are in Truscovitz and uh, it's a wonderful town, really, really pretty. Um, it's got the feel of a bit of a Swiss Alpine village. Um, a lot of the architecture, certainly the newer style of architecture, is um, very sort of Swiss looking. Um, we're in like the main square in front of the park here and as I mentioned Truskovitz is famous for its mineral waters and behind me is the first pump room. I believe there's two main pump rooms in Truskovitz. Uh, this one is not pumping at the moment for some reason. I'm not quite sure why that is uh, but this is generally where the, the main uh, spring water is pumped. I think the water apparently is uh, somewhat sulfuric, so whilst you can drink it, you might have to be pinching your nose a little bit to, to actually uh, to get the benefit if you like. But um, you can buy uh, a more filtered version, which is uh, you know bottled and sold in shops and bars. And uh, we've just had the filtered version for lunch with our lunch, and uh, it was actually very very nice. So, first impressions of Truskovitz, um, noisy with this uh, old lady talking about Soviet music, but uh, wonderful, really wonderful. Whilst Truskovitz, um, I think, uh, was famed for its waters before Soviet times, it was Soviet times that perhaps made it most famous. and. Um, the bizarre thing is, is if you've got this eclectic mixture of architecture of the new sort of faux Swiss style and uh, I'm not sure if you can see behind me but there's also these monolithic Soviet brutalist architecture as well and uh, kind of makes the place absolutely fascinating the juxtaposition between the two types of architecture. Now we're just walking into the uh, park that uh, is literally built around the city of uh, Truskovitz and uh, this is where the mineral waters and uh, spas sprung up around this beautiful wooded hilly area. Try a tricky descent down to the uh, to the lower pathway. Wish me luck. It's not that tricky, to be honest. Wait, he says, falling ass over tit. It's now three hours since we started the descent down the mountain, <sighs> and we're tired. Tanya is bearing up, and I think we will make it. Only another few hundred meters to go now. It's hot, it's sweaty, the jungle is taking its toll on us. But right down there are some seats. Behind us you can see the massive ascent that we've just come down. It's been tough, but it's been worth it. Here we have the lesser spotted Tanya, who having gathered her nuts for the winter, has decided she wants to eat them right now. Not for me, thank you. Are you sure? No, I'll buy mine in a packet. started 
it's, uh, it's not too heavy just a light drizzle at the moment hope it won't get too heavy we'll just continue strolling around Triskovitz exploring a little bit seeing what's going on uh, maybe walk down to the pump house and go in and uh, stopping off and drinking coffee and having snacks along the way I suspect This fella here you'll see quite a lot in northwestern Ukraine. He was uh, Stefan Bandera and he was a Ukrainian nationalist who fought against the uh, Stalinist regime um, in World War II. Uh, a lot of sort of pro-Russian Ukrainians accuse him of being a Nazi collaborator but uh, if you can imagine the situation where you've got oppressed Ukrainians under a Stalinistic system the only alternative was the Germans, so there are obviously always two sides to every single story. So Truskovitz today is, certainly has the feel of a, uh, a resort out of season and uh, it's a lot quieter feeling, the grey clouds and uh, a little bit of drizzle coming down from the sky and if you can see behind me the trees now are beginning to turn certainly in that part of the, the town by the park um, it's getting a little bit more autumnal, a little bit quieter and uh, winter will soon be here. where you get your famed Truskovitz water, mineral water from? Uh, you put your cut here, which you preload with money. 100 milliliters, 150, it depends. And it's four different um, waters. For example, here it's Maria. The name is of this water. Four different waters for different things. Cold, cold. Like and you have to drink the water through a straw, yeah? A straw because you, uh, it's damaging what, uh, your teeth. That's why a lot of people have sort of specific junks, uh, junks and they dr slowly drink it. Mm -hmm. yeah, very interesting. These are the, uh, the milliliter sizes that you can uh, dispense your water in. Uh, how much does it cost per, say, 100 milliliter? One litre, 24 grivnas. One litre is 24 grivnas, so 2.4 grivnas for 100 mils. But and this is actually the hot section or the warm section, so the water here is between 18 and 20 degrees, and in the other section it's uh, colder water. The machine on the left is actually where you can top up your uh, oyster style water card so that you can uh, get more water without having to actually go to the cashiers using your credit card or debit card. So, good morning from Truskovitz. It's uh, leaving day today. A uh, bit of a washout yesterday afternoon. The rain down came down quite heavily, so we stayed in and just went out uh, quite locally for dinner. Uh, now we have our train back, which is pretty much, I think, the same train as we arrived on two days ago, and you can just see it right behind me at the moment. It leaves at around 1.10 and gets us into Lviv at 3.30, and we should be checked into our Airbnb around 4. Okay, let the next part of the journey begin.
If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and even better, a subscription. If you want to stay up to date when we publish new videos, ring the notifications bell. See you all again soon.